Hi everyone, it's Ray from Ray Life Coaching and I wanted to share with you a blog that I wrote. It's called Boundaries and Empowering Steps Toward Self-Advocacy. And while I share this with you, I'm going to comment on some of it, uh, just ad-libbing here. Um, so if you're interested in any of the blogs that I've written, just go to reneebjord.com slash blog or raylifecoaching.com slash blog. Okay, so boundaries, empowering steps towards self-advocacy. So I'm not going to read it verbatim. I'm just going to kind of tell you what it's about. So I had a conversation with someone who had just started dating another person who had just started um, practicing polyamory. Uh, and so therefore, the person I was talking to is pretty much doing that too, because they're dating someone who is. And they were kind of upset. They were upset because they found out or they were told by their partner that they didn't, their partner didn't want them to go to an event that they wanted to go to. And because their partner said that they would be stepping on their boundary if they went and because they wanted their partner wanted to go with their other partner. So kind of confusing, but let's say the person I was talking to is, is uh, name is Rich and they had this partner called Sally and Sally said, Hey, I don't want you to come to this event. I know you really want to go to it on your own, but I'm going with um, Jess and I really don't want you to come and, you know, kind of, I, I'm not quite sure if they said, well, if you, if you come, I'll whatever, you know, they might have not done any of that. They just pretty much said, don't come. I don't want you to come because I'm going with Jess. And so I was talking to Rich and Rich is like, hmm. Um, and the word boundary was in the conversation at what they used, you know, what their partner, Sally said, oh, it, it's my boundary. You'd be stepping on my boundaries. And I was like, hmm, yeah, no, not, I mean, not really. Um, if anything, they're telling you a rule, they're telling you what to do and, and you're abiding by it. I mean, that's your choice. Um, but they're not, there's not a real conversation about it. And the conversation could be, you know, could be an agreement. Um, or they could say, hey, you know, I feel uncomfortable with having you both there. I'm planning on going with Jess and you can go. I mean, like, right? I mean, it's kind of like telling someone they can't go to an event they would normally go alone with to anyway. Um, and you can go, but just know that I might not, I might do this or might do that. I might do this. You know, I might ignore you. I might not talk to you. I might want to like do this or that. And, and I'll feel uncomfortable. I might have to leave, you know, I mean, that's their stuff. Um, that's a conversation. It could be like, are you okay? You know, asking someone to just not go is like, yeah, it's, it's, you could do that, but it's, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's a conversation, right? So, but this ended up not being a conversation. It was just kind of a telling. And what I found is that I've noticed that when we, think that we're upholding our boundaries, we often attempt to hold others accountable for upholding our own boundaries, which is not really how that works. So, and in doing so, we inadvertently disempower ourselves by placing others in control of our own needs. So how we can assert our wants, how, how do we assert our wants and needs? Um, while upholding our own boundaries. And here I propose three steps to help you or anybody uh, kind of understand themselves well enough so that they can set 
boundaries for themselves. So um, I want to quote, uh, this is says Paul, but it's Paulo Coelho. Um, and he says, when we say yes to others, make sure you're not saying no to yourself. So I think that's huge because for me, I tend to say yes really quickly. And I think it's, it's a habit, um, one of not really thinking, taking the time to think, hey, what do I need in this circumstance? And is this okay for me? Um, and maybe it's like, yes, but there's like things I need, you know, and or yes, but I may need to say, but I need to go at this time. I need to dry myself. I need, you know, like there might be qualifications that are needed. So I'm going to tell you the three steps that I propose to setting your own boundaries. And number one is what is bothering you and why? Oh, I find the hardest part about boundaries is stopping for a moment and really listening to why you feel what you feel. So and when I say why you feel what you feel, usually that's Usually there's a feeling involved, you know, there's like tension or, you know, this like, mm, that doesn't feel right. Or, oh, I'm angry now. Um, and that usually means it's gone past <clears throat> your bound, like something that you should know about yourself or need to know about yourself in order to set your own boundaries. And so it's like, it's, you, you you might not be able to set them right then, you know, because it's almost too late, but that's okay. You know, you can learn from that situation and be like, hmm, this feeling, what does that mean? So in the case of that person that I was talking to, Rich, um, you know, they they had expressed some annoyance with not being able to go to this event. And so that feeling of being annoyed and brought up feelings of like not having freedom and maybe wanting their partner or partners in their life to be like, I understand you have a right to go to wherever you want to go. I can't tell you where to go. Um, and, and also having partners that, um, and people in your life that see you as autonomous and see you and see themselves as in control of their own life, you know, and their own feelings and that, that they can figure it out their own stuff. Um, so for them, it was that they wanted to feel free and, and to go, you know, what was bothering them. And number two, stop assuming and start discovering. So I'm just going to read this. The next crucial step is to define with utmost clarity what you are absolutely not okay with, what you can agree to, and the consequences you are willing to accept in order to attain your desires. So that sounds kind of like, oh, bad, you know, but it is kind of like creating clarity. Like, okay, I might not, maybe I know so-and-so. I don't like driving them with them. I don't like because they tend to always or they pretty much won't let me drive. And so I have to ride with them. And they're like screaming at every which way because <laughs> they're kind of a rageful driver. And so I'm like, my boundary is I ride with people who are calm and aren't taking out all their aggression while they're driving. <laughs> You know, that's, that's just a safety measure for me. It feels very unsafe to be in the car with someone like that. And I also like to know that I have the freedom to drive. You know, if someone's not able, let's say they we go to an event together and they're not like that, but they don't want me to ever drive their car, um, then if they drink and I haven't, and I'm like, uh, I can't drive your car now. Like that might not feel safe to me. So I might be like, Hey, how about we meet there? 
you know, it's as simple as that. Or, hey, how about I drive my car? Whatever, you know, if that's, but th these are things that you have to know ahead of time, right? You not only have to know about yourself, but you have to know about the person. And that, that takes a little time and it's okay. But there's a lot of assumptions that we have sometimes um, about a situation and we have to ask all those questions and we have to remember what happened last time and be like, oh no, I'm not speaking to that person. You know, <laughs> that's not the same per in my mind. They're not a person that I can ride in the car with or whatever it is. I'm speaking to this person that I can't ride to the in, in a car with. Um, so it's being able to set that thing. So let's say you're in a car. I'm going to just give an example. You're in the middle of finding this out and you know this about yourself. You're in the middle of finding this out and you're realizing, oh, this person is like dangerous. You know, like it's scary to me to be in the car with them. And how do you set yourself up? for as soon as possible. One, you could say something, but they're already enraged. So now you're in an unsafe situation. So you're like, uh, not a good time, not a great place. How do I get them to like either stop or, you know, maybe they've stopped and I can now leave the car. That's a possibility, you know? Um, but maybe it's not to that degree and you get out and you're like, hey, I'm gonna Uber back home or I'm gonna find somebody to drive me back home or whatever it is. You know, it's like making yourself safe. You know, really, it, some of these things are about your own personal safety and it might not be that big of an issue. It might be just a really small thing of like feeling good. How can I get my feelings to a good place? So, so in the recent conversation with, with Rich, I'm going to go back to that, um, that story. The individual, I, that person that I sat down with, okay, so they were annoyed and because they they felt like their partner also wasn't giving them a choice, so wasn't allowing consent and a conversation. And so instead of honestly expressing that, uh, Sally wasn't honestly expressing and like creating that open place of saying, hey, I prefer attending events with one person at a time. I feel uncomfortable when you're present while I'm with my other partner, Jess, can we find a mutual agreement, agreeable solution? Like that's maybe what Rich would have preferred um, their partner, Sally, to say. Instead, Sally decided to impose a rule on Rich. So most of us fall into this pattern, right? And and we um, might not fully communicate our needs. And a lot of the time it's because we don't really know what they are. We either rely on others to dictate how we should be, or we trample over others to fulfill our own desires. While these approaches may seem momentarily effective because we get what we want at the moment, they are ultimately unsustainable. While these uh, by relying on these methods, we may inadvertently overlook the fact that we have never truly possessed our own power. And furthermore, in, uh, in both cases, we remain unaware of our genuine needs and the underlying reasons behind them. To break free from this pattern, it is essential to stop assuming and start discovering through open and honest communication. So where that assumptions in the discovery lie is in the communication. Not only with ourselves, but if it has to do with somebody else, then with each other. And that can be hard um, because if we're not being honest and really clear with ourselves, then it's going to be very difficult to unearth, hey, this is what's happening with me. Can we talk about it? You know, and I'm owning my stuff and I'm that's where it comes from. It's like, I have to own my stuff first. Fun. <laughs> okay. So number three, standing up for yourself, the path to belonging. So beneath the surface of all of this, the manner, this manner of setting boundaries, what we were doing before, rests on a faulty foundation of control, manipulation, and insecurity. 
We fear facing our own needs because we worry that others will reject us. Ultimately, it all boils down to the fundamental need for belonging. However, let me make this clear. Belonging can only emerge from within. We cannot compel anyone to like us, agree with us, desire us, belong to us, do what we want, right? Nor can they do the same to us. So, for instance, I can barely get myself to add a new easy habit. And why do I think I can control anybody else? And that being said, authentic boundaries require courage. And as they proclaim to the world that we are important enough to have a voice and to fully enjoy our lives. They hold power because in order to stand up for our needs, we must first deeply understand ourselves, accept others as they are, which entails truly seeing them and lovingly let go of their opinions because we trust in the healing energy of being authentic to ourselves. Before I leave you, I will share with you what I told that newbie poly person. Let's say their name was Rich. So you can ask for what you want. <laughs> you can set your own boundaries when, even when others are not. For example, here's an idea of what you could say to your partner. Thank you for sharing what you feel uncomfortable with. How you feel is so important to me. I now want to share with you what I absolutely need in a relationship and what I am willing to agree to around this topic. After which, I like to talk about how you feel about this and how we can make this work for both of us. So in my blog, I propose one tip, but it has five parts on starting small in your own life, particularly with something that doesn't involve others. <laughs> because once someone else is involved, it becomes way more complicated because it's about taking that time to ask those questions. And that tends to be the hardest part. And also dealing with your own inner voice um, around just saying no or yes to yourself in a way that you may need to do and how to get yourself to do things um, that are hard really comes right down to that. So starting small, and so practicing your boundaries, boundary setting and follow through on yourself with small items in your life. For example, maybe you always do something that you know leads you to be disappointed in the end. Do these five steps and see how it works out for you. So the first one is ask yourself, why do I feel this way when I do this? So usually the feeling when you want to ask that is when it doesn't feel good, you know, when it's like, ah, uh, um, the disappointment part is a part of that. You know, it might not be disappointment. It might be just like bored or whatever. You know, two, what am I getting by doing this? What's the benefit? Like what's keeping me here? Like what's keeping me eating all of these chips? <laughs> you know, like, hmm, <laughs> that's a hard one, right? Um, ask yourself, what kind of person do you want to be in this scenario? So who are you acting like right now by sitting there eating the entire bag of chips? And who do you actually want to be? And who do you think you are but aren't acting like right now? Okay. So number four, what is the line in the sand for this activity? What will I do? What will I not accept into my life anymore? So that that's a, a to me, number four is about your big why. You're like, number three, four, yeah, number three and four is like your big why. Who am I and why? <laughs> you know, like, who do I represent and why in this moment? And it could be such a small moment, like eating those bag of chips, you know. Um, so I would say choose something small. I mean, bag of chips might actually be too hard, 
you know, uh, if you press on my blog and press the podcast mini-sode, you'll see a very small um, example that I do, that I give um, to help you with this. So number five is dream up three scenarios that could happen that would make it hard to keep your boundary with yourself around this thing and find workarounds that will help you keep on your path. So yeah, boundaries, they're they're very easy, but they're also not because it means that you need to know. We all do them. We all have boundaries. We all do things that we don't even realize we do, that we set. A habit in itself is a boundary. I mean, we tell the world and ourselves what is acceptable and what isn't, and that is a boundary. So if you say, you know, it's acceptable for me to wake up at 8 a.m. instead of 6 p.m., 6 a.m. That's a boundary. You know, it's acceptable that I wake up and, you know, go get coffee and watch a show instead of sit on my meditation mat and do yoga. You know, like that's a boundary. I have I have created um, a way of speaking to myself by doing these things and not doing other things. I'm saying yes to something and I'm not saying yes to something else. So that's pretty much it. If you're interested again in my uh, blog, go to uh, reneebior.com slash blog or raylifecoaching.com slash blog. Or if you want to read, um, if you want a subscription to my pep talk, it goes further into these kinds of things and links to my blog and links to all of all of the other things that I do. Um, feel free to subscribe by just going to my website and a pop-up will come and you can just put in your information. Um, also subscribe to this YouTube channel. That would be great. Uh, if you need help, or support in finding your authentic self, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I offer workshops and one-to-one -one coaching to help seekers on their journey. For free resources to help you tap into your authentic voice, sign up by going to reneebior.com slash free dash resources. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye.